أشهد أن محمدا عبده ورسوله صلى الله عليه وسلم أما بعد then this evening the evening of الجمعة here in the first week of شعبان in the year 1441 after the Hijrah of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam we wanted to begin a series of talks pertaining being pleased with the decree of Allah Tabarak wa Ta'ala and it goes without saying that such a topic is very pertinent to the days that we find ourselves in and as much as that people globally are being tried and tested in a variety of ways pertaining their health and pertaining their wealth and we realize more and more that we have been sheltered so much from difficulty and hardship throughout our lives, from pain and suffering in many ways throughout many of our lives. So I want to share with you and to benefit first and foremost myself by reading from some speech of the great Imam Shaykh al Islam ibn Qayyim al Jawzi rahimahullah ta'ala. From his book Madarij Asalikin, pertaining Al Rida Bil Qada, being pleased with Al Qada, being pleased with what Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala for ordains. At the end of that lengthy section, where he discusses the different viewpoints and doctrines of the various sects who ascribe themselves to Islam from the people of innovation and from the people of sunnah and having a correct belief pertaining the qadr of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and how this gives a person the survival mechanism and tools that are needed to survive hardship and to approach adverse adversity and difficulty with a heart that is broad and expanded and that is comfortable with whatever Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tries them with, knowing that the akhirah is munsiyah, that the hereafter will make them forget everything that came before it, that every bliss and joy that they ever experienced in this world, that even a moment in the hellfire will make them forget it all, and that every difficulty and hardship and calamity that they could experience in this world, that even a moment the blinking of an eye in the paradise, a short moment in the paradise will make them forget all the difficulties and all the hardships that they ever endured. Ibn Qayyim rahimahullah ta'ala, he says that from the meanings of al-rida bil qada, or from the things that are shara'it rather, from the things that are prerequisites, that are necessary for a person to be pleased with the qada of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, what Allah has preordained, He says, and tastawi indahu a ni'matu wal baliya, is that it is all the same to the person, whether they are experiencing a ni'ma, the grace of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in His favor, or a baliya, or a calamity and hardship and trialing from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. وَإِنَّمَا تَسْتَوِيَ نِعْمَةُ وَالْبَلِيَةُ عِنْدَهُ فِي الرِّضَى بِهِمَا لِوُجُوهُ And there are a number of perspectives that a person can take. And these things are the motivations for a person. There are a number of perspectives that they could take, a number of reasons why it will be all the same for some of the believers. Whether they are being tested by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala with difficulty, whether they find themselves in a state of na'amah, 
a state of ease and comfort and so on and so forth. And this is something that is only for some of the believers. And it is the highest degree of faith that a person pertaining what is difficult and hard, that they go a step beyond a sabr, patience, which is mandatory. And patience is habsu nafs an tasakhut bil maqdur. In this regard, it is a person restraining their self and preventing their self from being upset and displeased with what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has foreordained. That is the meaning of patience. It's quite different than what is mentioned here. Istiwa ul halat and the ni'ma wal baliya. That a person, that their circumstance and that their inner state of being would be all the same, whether they are going through a ni'ma or a baliya, as a much higher level of faith and requires a much greater level of iman for a person to not care whether they are being tested or whether they are being placed in ease and comfort and so on and so forth. And of course, this doesn't mean that a person casts herself into hardship and difficulty. As the Prophet Sallallahu he said, لا ينبغي للمؤمن أن يذل نفسه يتعرض للبلاء فيما لا يطيق أو كما قال صلى الله عليه وسلم it is not befitting for the believer to disgrace himself, to humiliate himself by subjecting himself to be tried and tested in a manner that he cannot bear. But what is meant by this is that if a person, not of their own volition and not because they have looked for difficulty or hardship, is put to trial and test because of the level of their faith, because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala may love them, as the Prophet sallallahu he said, وَإِنَّ اللَّهَ تَبَارَكَ وَتَعَالَى إِذَا أَحَبَّ قَوْمًا بَتَلَاهُمْ فَمَنْ رَضِيَ فَلَهُ الرَّضَى وَمَنْ سَخِطَ فَلَهُ السَّخَطَ وَالسُّخْطَ Now when Allah Tabarak wa Ta'ala loves the people, He tests them. Whoever is pleased, فَلَهُ الرَّضَى Then that is what He gets from the situation. الرَّضَى is contentment and happiness in this situation. And whoever is displeased, then they get a السَّخَط Then they are upset. Let them be upset. And another meaning could be then they will have a rida, meaning the rida of Allah, that Allah will be pleased with them. Or they will have a sakhat. They will have a sukht or a sakhat, the anger of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala upon them, or the displeasure of Allah. May Allah protect us from His displeasure. And so it may be that Allah loves the people. And so He puts them to trial and He puts them to test to bring out qualities and virtues in them. And to bring out some of these aspects that we're going to come to see. And as was mentioned, this will be a series of talks because Ibn Qayyim here, he mentions 60 aspects. Six zero, 60 as aspects of and perspectives that can be taken by the believer as motivation or the reasons why the believer may have a rida, may be pleased with al-qada, with the pre-decree of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. He says, أَحَدُهَا أَنَّهُ مفوض. The first reason is because he is مفوض. The believer he is مفوض. And he has surrendered his affair to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. He has surrendered the decision to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Knowing that Allah is the best to choose what happens in his life. Allah tabarak wa ta'ala, the one awjadahu min al-adam. وَأَمَدَّهُ وَعَدَّهُ بِكُلِّ مَا يَحْتَاجُ إِلَيْهِ لِلْبَقَاءِ وَلِلْرَاحَةِ The one who brought him into existence from nothing. The one who has given him the wherewithal internally and who has given him the instincts and who has given him the innate capability and who has given him the physical means and the external means that are needed for survival and needed for comfort and to fend for oneself and to be guided and to... Uh, protect oneself and to take care of one's responsibilities and so on and so forth. But the believer, he knows that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala knows best and that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is, is best to choose in the situation. So the person he has mufawwith, a fawwadha amrahu in Allah, the person he has surrendered his 
matches to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. He knows that this is something that is iltirar, something that he has really no choice about anyways. And so he needs to do this voluntarily because it is something that he really has no choice about. He really has no choice in the matter. And so it is better for him to voluntarily see to this matter and concede that this is the fact and to accept it, to accept what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala chooses and to surrender the matter to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and to surrender the matter to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. أَنَّهُ مُفَوِّضُ وَالْمُفَوِّضُ رَاضٍ بِكُلِّ مَخْتَارُهُ لَهُ مَنْ فَوَّضَ إِلَيْهِ And the person who is like that is pleased with whatever is chosen by the one who has turned his affair over to. Who he has turned his affair over to. And he's the one that he has surrendered his matters to. وَلَا سِيَمَا إِذَا عَلِيمَ كَمَالَ حِكْمَتِهِ وَرَحْمَتِهِ He said especially when he is fully acquainted with and has knowledge about the wisdom, the perfect wisdom and mercy of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Wa lutfihi wa husni ikhtiyarihi lahu. And the subtle mercy of Allah, the lutf of Allah, Allah is a latif. A lutf, the scholars they say in the Arabic language, and its meaning as applies to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is of two types. A lutf pertaining Allah's knowledge and a lutf pertaining Allah's rahmah, his mercy. For indeed Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala wasi'a kulla shayin rahmatan wa ilma. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala encompasses all things in knowledge and in mercy. And knowledge and in mercy. And a lot pertaining Allah's knowledge, the scholars they say, is Allah knowing the most subtle of matters. Daqaiq al umur. The most subtle of matters. And a lot uh, pertaining Allah's mercy is connected to that. Since Allah knows the most subtle of matters, then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala shows mercy in the most subtle fashion. What is meant by that? يَرْحَمُ عِبَادُهُ بِأَسْبَابٍ لَا يَشْعُرُونَ بِهَا Was that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, He shows mercy to His servants in ways that they don't even realize. That things that are happening on a regular and daily basis, and momentary basis in their lives, are a subtle mercy from Allah in ways that they don't even realize. Allah is, sh- is, sh- is showing them subtle mercy. Is showing them subtle mercy. And so the wisdom of Allah and the knowledge of Allah and the mercy of Allah and the subtle kindness or subtle mercy of Allah, the lutf of Allah, is realized by the servant. And so, he yufawidu amrahu ilallah. He surrenders his affairs to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. He leaves the decision to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to choose what happens in his life. Athani, the second motivation for him, أَنَّهُ جَازِمٌ بِأَنَّهُ لَا تَبْدِيلَ لِكَلِمَاتِ اللَّهِ that the person has certitude and conviction that there is no one who can change the kalimat of Allah, the words of Allah, what Allah has ordered to happen, what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has issued of divine decree and preordination, what happens in his life, preordainment of what happens in his life, that there's no one who can change that. There's nothing and no one that can change that in any way whatsoever. وَلَا رَادَّ لِحُكْمِهِ And there is no one who can reject and deflect the hukum of Allah, the judgment of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. وَأَنُّهُ مَا شَاءَ اللَّهُ كَانْ And that whatever Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala wills, occurs. وَمَا لَمْ يَشَاءَ لَمْ يَكُنْ And whatever He does not will, will not occur. فَهُوَ يَعْلَمْ وَأَنَّ كُلًّا مِنَ الْبَلِيَةِ وَنْعَمَ بِقَضَاءٍ سَابِقْ وَقَدَرٍ حَتْمٍ And so He knows that a ni'ma wal baliya, the ease and hardship, and Allah's grace and Allah's testing and trialing of the person. The all of this happens by way of preordainment, and all of it comes about by way of qadr in hatm. And you have an unavoidable, inexorable qadr from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, preordainment from Allah, and predestining by Allah. Subhanahu wa ta'ala. Athalith, the third motivation for the person, the third aspect that the believer can look at this matter from and perspective that he can take 
a motivation to drive him. أَنَّهُ عَبْدٌ مَحْبُ Is that he is purely the property of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, the slave of Allah. He is the possession of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. وَالْعَبْدُ الْمَحْضُ لَا يَسْخَتُ جَرَيَانَ أَحْكَامِ سَيِّدِهِ الْمُشْفِقَ الْبَارِ النَّاصِحِ الْمُحْسِنِ And the one who was like that, the one who was the property of the Creator, Allah tabarak wa ta'ala, he, it is not rightful for him, he knows that he is not to be upset and displeased with what is rendered of judgment upon him by his master, who is bar and muhsin, who is benevolent and who is kind and nasih and who wants what is best for him. بَلْ يَتَلَقَّاهَا كُلَّهَا But rather he responds to all of it and he encounters all of it and he takes in all of it بِالرِّضَى بِهِ وَعَنْهُ By being pleased with it and being pleased with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala being, be, being pleased with what has been preordained and being pleased with Allah who preordained it subhanahu wa ta'ala الرَّابِعْ The fourth perspective the fourth motivation for the person and no muhib is that he loves Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and no muhib he loves his lord his master his creator Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala the one who has no need of him and the one who he as a human being and as a slave of Allah and the possession of Allah is in dire need of subhanahu wa ta'ala he is muhib he loves Allah Subhanahu wa ta'ala wal muhibbu sadiq and the one who is genuine and truthful in their love man radiya bima yu'amiluhu bihi habibuh is the one who is pleased with whatever is done to them by their habib by their beloved by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala al khamis the fifth motivation the fifth perspective the fifth way that a person can look at it to motivate them to be pleased with what happens from the qada of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala أنه جاهل بعواقب الأمور is that he knows that certainly he as a human being, as a slave of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that he is jahil that he is ignorant بعواقب الأمور pertaining how things will end up how things will eventuate how things will be and their end result he is ignorant about the end result of matters and how things are going to turn out. وَسَيِّدُهُ عَلَمُ بِمَصْلَحَتِهِ وَبِمَا يَنْفَعُهُ And that his master, his Lord subhanahu wa ta'ala is more knowledgeable pertaining what is of a good for him and what will benefit him. As-Sadis, the sixth matter that Ibn Qayyim rahimahullah ta'ala mentions. أنه لا يريد مصلحة نفسه من كل وجه is that he knows as a human being that he doesn't want the good for him for his own self in every way that what he wants for himself is not what is best for himself in every way what he wants for himself is not what is best for himself in every way That what he wants for himself is not what is best for himself in every way. Can everyone hear? I saw there was a message asking, can people hear? If you can hear, uh, just type into the box. If the audio is clear. He says, Rahimullah ta'ala, أَنَّهُ لَا يُرِيدُ مَصْلَحَةَ نَفْسِهِ مِنْ كُلِّ وَجْهِ جَزَاكُمُ اللَّهُ خَيْرًا May Allah reward you. That he doesn't know, as a human being, what is of a maslaha for his own self. What is of a greater good for his own self in every way. وَلَوْ عَرَفَ أَسْبَابَهَا Even if he is familiar with and acquainted with the ways to secure what is of a greater good for himself. And a person acts counter to their understanding and to their better senses and sensibilities on a regular basis. People do things that they know are harmful on a daily basis, on a regular basis. 
And this is his reality as a human being. No matter who the person is, there are many instances on a regular basis where they do things that are counterintuitive and counterproductive and harmful for their own self and harmful even for those that are around them and so on and so forth. And so the person knows that they their self do not want what is of a good for their self in every way. Even if they were familiar with and acquainted with the means to procure and to secure the good for their self. So the person admits that they are jahil and zalim, that they are both ignorant and that they are oppressive. They are ignorant and they are, from the meanings of jahil, is foolish. And they are oppressive because ignorance is of two types where a person doesn't know what is beneficial from what is harmful and where a person knows that but they are counter to it, contrary to it. That is called a safa. It's called ignorance in action. So the person they are ignorant and foolish and they are oppressive and they are wrongful. And they realize this about their self as Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala he mentions in the end of uh, Surah Al-Hazab, إِنَّا عَرَضْنَا الْأَمَانَةَ عَلَى سَمَوَاتِ وَالْأَرْضِ وَالْجِبَالِ فَأَبَيْنَا نِيَحْمِنَّهَا وَأَشْفَقْنَا مِنْهَا Indeed, Allah in His greatness offered the trust of more responsibility and to have free will and a choice about obedience so that you could be rewarded if you comply or punished, if you refuse. He offered the trust of the heavens and the earth and to the mountains. They declined to bear it and they were afraid of it. وَحَمَلَهَا الْإِنسَانُ Yet mankind bore the trust. إِنَّهُ كَانَ ظَلُومَ جَهُولًا Indeed, mankind is ignorant and oppressive. That is the description of all of mankind. And those that are spared from this description are spared to some degree only by the mercy and the favor and the kindness of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So the person realizes that by their very nature, that in many, many ways they are ignorant and foolish, and in many ways they are oppressive. وَرَبُّهُ تَعَالَى يُرِيدُ مَصْلْحَتَ Yet his Lord, subhanahu wa ta'ala, his nurturing creator and Lord, Rabb subhanahu wa ta'ala, يُرِيدُ مَصْلْحَتَ is the one who wants what is purely good for the human being. He's the one who wants what is purely good for the human being. And he has legislated what is purely good for the human being, and he has ordered the human being to make his decisions and his choices based upon what he has revealed, subhanahu wa ta'ala, to the prophets and their messengers, and to the last and final prophet, which was Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Ibn Qayyim rahimahullah ta'ala, he says, so his Lord, he realizes that his Lord, subhanahu wa ta'ala, wants what is of a, of, of a maslaha for him, what is of a greater good for him. وَيَسُوقُ إِلَيْهِ asbabaha. And that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is the one who drives the means and the causes and the circumstances and so on and so forth towards the person who facilitates those means for the human being. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala facilitates those means for the human being. asbabiha, And from the greatest of things that bring about maslaha for the person, al abd, From the greatest of things that bring about what is of a good for the human being, is that which is disliked by the human being, that which is not preferred by the human being. فَإِنَّ مَصْلَحَتُهُ فِيمَا يَكْرَهُ أَضْعَافُ أَضْعَافِ مَصْلَحَتِهِ فِيمَا يُحِبُ Because what is of a good for him, and that which he dislikes, is many times beyond what is of a good for him, and that which he likes and loves. So there are many things that are disliked to the human being, that may be difficult or hard, that are better for them that are better for them. And those things may be many times beyond what the person prefers. And he, they go outside of what is convenient, they go outside of what is uh, comfortable for the person, and so on and so forth. And so the person would rather prefer to be in a state of comfort. Even look at this test that most of us are going through right now, being confined to our homes. It's really in comparison to what people all throughout history have been through. It is really almost laughable. It's almost laughable that a person would consider this to be a test for them. That you're stuck sitting in your homes, in the comfort of your couches and beds and so on and so forth, sitting in, your, in the most comfortable place to you. You're not in a prison somewhere. You're sitting in your, in your home, on your furniture, or sitting in 
or sitting on your deck or on your patio or something of the sort. It's a very simple test. It's a very, very simple test. And of course, many of us are being tried in our finances and that sort of thing. But in reality, in all reality, I mean, these are what we call first world problems, right? When people all throughout the world, especially in the modern era, are going through civil insurrection, going through war-torn countries and uh, war-torn circumstances and famine and all sorts of things. And we find ourselves, I and mean, in this very easy test at this point, may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala protect us. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala safeguard us all. However, this is a reality. I mean, but what is difficult for the person, what is difficult for the person is many times beyond, is many times beyond uh, what a person would prefer that is loved to him and comfortable for him. Ibn Qayyim says, as Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he says, كُتِبَ عَلَيْكُمُ الْقِيْتَالُ وَهُوَ كُرْحٌ لَكُمْ وَعَسَى أَن تَكْرَهُ شَيْئًا وَهُوَ خَيْرٌ لَكُمْ وَعَسَى أَن تُحِبُّ شَيْئًا وَهُوَ شَرٌ لَكُمْ وَاللَّهُ يَعْلَمُ وَأَنْتُمْ لَا تَعْلَمُونَ Fighting has been legislated for you. And it is disliked to you. But perhaps you would dislike a thing and it is better for you. And perhaps you will like a thing and it is worse for you. And Allah knows and you do not know. And this is something that applies to the whole religion. Everything of difficulty in the religion is not legislated for the sake of the difficulty per se, the scholars they say. But the difficulty a person is rewarded for and it is connected to the act of worship itself. Any difficulty a person goes through in the performance of worship for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he is rewarded for it. He is rewarded for it and it's something that is unavoidable from time to time. And according to the circumstance of a person. And when difficulty becomes inordinate, and mashaqa tajlibu taysir. And he inordinate difficult, abnormal difficulty, what is outside of the normal difficulty, and he allows for a person to take the concession and make things easier for themselves, like the person who has difficulty standing in the salat, abnormal difficulty because of sickness or so on and so forth, and he can sit in the salat. And he a person likewise pertaining fasting if they are sick. And even if they are not extremely sick, if they are slightly sick in such a way, where fasting will be an, an inordinate difficulty upon them, or can make their, could exacerbate their sickness or something of the sort, then Allah has given them concession. He has given them concession. He has given them the ability to, uh, He has given them the ikhtiyar, I mean the khira, I mean the choice of whether or, not, whether or not to fast, and that sort of situation in general. And so, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, He has... Knowledge of all matters. And he knows and we do not know. And you may like something and it is worse for you. And you may love something. Or you may hate something or dislike something. Because of the difficulty that it entails. And it is better for you. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala knows and you do not know. We took this approach to the qadr of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. We took this approach to the religion of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And we'll find ourselves progressing in our faith. And progressing in our religion. Ibn Qayyim rahimullah ta'ala, he says, Likewise, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he says, Pertaining uh, marital discord, فَإِنْ كَرِحْتُمُهُنَّ That if you find that you dislike your wives, فَعَسَى أَنْ تَكْرَحُ شَيْئًا Then perhaps you may dislike a thing, وَيَجْعَنُ اللَّهُ فِيهِ خَيْرًا كَثِيرًا And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will place an abundance of good within that thing. That Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will place an abundance of good Within that thing, meaning so be patient, be patient, and make your decisions based upon weighing the masali and the mafasid, the benefits and the harms, and using wisdom and insight and so on and so forth. Asabir, the seventh matter, Ibn Qayyim rahimullah ta'ala, he says, and we'll close with this, and no Muslim. The seventh thing that motivates the person to be pleased and to and view with equivalency, difficulty, and hardship. With ease and comfort. And that is all the same to him, no matter what he goes through. And that he is pleased with the decree of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, is that he is a Muslim. And he is a Muslim. He is one who said, has submitted to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Well, Muslim, man qad sallama nafsahu lillah. And the Muslim is the one who has surrendered and submitted himself to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Wala mi atarid alayhi, fi jarayani ahkami alayhi. And so it is not for him to disagree with what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala causes to happen. 
and has preordained and judged to happen in the life of a person. While Allah has issued of judgment pertaining to qadr, it is not for the person to disagree with that. وَلَمْ يَسْقَطْ ذَلِكْ And it is not for the person to be displeased with it, to be upset by it. وَثَامِنْ And the eighth thing, and this is the last thing, وَثَامِنْ Inshallah ta'ala The eighth thing, أَنَّهُ عَارِفٌ بِرَبِّهِ Is that the person is familiar with who Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is. Allah's names and His attributes, what Allah does, what Allah is free of, of defect and imperfection, and what Allah is free of, of oppression, and so on and so forth. That He has absolved Allah from anything that will cause Him to have bad thoughts about Allah, or ill suspicion of Allah. Subhanahu wa ta'ala, He has ma'rifah. He has a keen awareness about Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. He is arifun billah. The person he is familiar with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Hasanu dhani bihi. And he has good thoughts about Allah. Subhanahu wa ta'ala. La yatahimuhu fima yujurihi alayhi min aqdiyatihi wa aqdarihi. And he doesn't harbor suspicion against Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And he doesn't falsely accuse Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Pertaining what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has caused to happen by way of predestiny and by way of foreordainment. فَحُسْنُ ذَنِّهِ بِهِ يُجِبُ لَهُ إِسْتِوَاءِ الْحَالَاتِ عِنْدَهُ So his good thoughts about Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala necessitate for him. His good thoughts about Allah make him have this attitude of إِسْتِوَاءِ الْحَالَاتِ عِنْدَهُ of viewing comfort and difficulty all the same. So long as Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has preordained this for the person, that if his situation is comfortable, or if his situation is difficult, it is all the same for the person. Because he has good thoughts about Allah, and he is familiar with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. وَرَضَاهُ بِمَا يَخْتَارُهُ لَهُ سَيِّدُهُ سُبْحَانَهُ وَتَعَالَى And it causes the person, his uh, good thoughts about Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala likewise causes the person to be pleased with what Allah, his master and Lord has chosen to, has chose to happen in his situation. What Allah has selected to happen and chose to happen for the person, he understands that this is what is better. That Allah knows that he doesn't know. That Allah is merciful and he is oppressive to his own self. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is kind and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is wise. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and you alhimana rushdana and to inspire us with that which is most rightly guided of knowledge and action. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in this last hour and these final moments of the day of al Jumu'ah and what is most likely Sa'atul Ijaba, most likely the hour of Al Ijaba, of the response of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to the invocations and summonings of his servants. We ask Allah Subhanahu wa ta'ala to cure our many brothers and sisters and loved ones who have contracted this virus uh, in many different countries. People that we personally know and are familiar with and whose situations we are constantly making dua to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to soften our hearts towards the musadha'afeen, towards those who are in a state of vulnerability in these times, to open up our hearts and to open up our wallets, to aid those who are in a state of difficulty and hardship. Alhamdulillah, many of us, we find ourselves in a situation where we may have savings, in a situation where uh, we have not been financially impacted by this at this point. And of course, we should always keep money to the side and keep some things in our savings. But we should view ourselves. La yastahiq. And he has, comes from, I believe, Anas ibn Malik, where he said, and he, that we used to see that one, one of us had al-fadl, one of us had access in their wealth. When they had access in their wealth, that they didn't, ha- that they didn't believe that they were deserving of this excess, except that they use it in a way that would benefit those who are in need of it, of course. I and mean, this is something that the scholars have written about in great detail, taking these very, these various narrations about ita al fadl, giving what is excess and what is easy of wealth to help those who are in need, especially in a state where it is most needed. As the scholars, they define a sakha badlu. بَذْلُوا مَا يُحْتَاجُ إِلَيْهِ فِي وَقْتِ الْحَاجَةِ Giving what is needed at the time that it is most needed لِمُسْتَحِقِيهِ To those who are most deserving of it عِنْدَ الطَّاقَةِ According to the 
ability that you have, according to the ability that you have. So if you find yourself in that situation, there are many uh, good causes, massages that need to be supported, overhead costs that don't go away. 